Hello everyone and welcome to the Godot cookie clicker tutorial series. In this tutorial series I will be teaching you how to build a cookie clicker game in the Godot engine from scratch. All source files like images and fonts are available in the description and let's get started. So first I'm going to create a project. I call it cookie clicker but you can call it whatever you want and because I'm making this game entirely using UI elements I'll choose the compatibility. It doesn't really matter what you choose, except if you want to export your game to mobile, you, will, you should choose either mobile or compatibility. Otherwise, Forward Plus is fine if you want a PC only game with better graphics. But since we're making a cookie clicker game and it will be only UI elements, I'll choose compatibility. So once we're in the engine, go up here to create scene and make a user interface scene. I'll rename this to game. Then you should go to the description of this video and find this Google Drive link. And then go into part one, assets, and download this entire folder. Next, open the folder and go to your Godot project and extract the vault the assets folder into your project. As you can see, the assets folder is now my project and I have the fonts and images I will need for this tutorial. Next, I'll delete the default icon because we won't be needing that. And we should get started making the UI elements. So first, I'll make a center container, which does what the name suggests. Anything you put inside this container will be centered in the side of the container. So I'll go over here to layout and change the anchor to full rectangle. You don't have to go in here. You can also go from up here and do the same thing. Next, I'll add a texture button inside the center container. And I will give it a normal texture, quick load, the cookie texture, which you should have downloaded from my Google Drive. Next, I'll press ignore texture size and stretch mode to scale. As you can see, the cookie is very small. So I'll go into layout and set the custom minimum size to mm, 400 pixels, maybe. Oh, that's a bit too big. 200 pixels. There you go. And now we have a cookie in the center. Next, I'll add another uh, node, which will be the VBox node. The VBox, VBox container is a vertical container, which I will use to hold the labels for your cookie amounts and your cookie per seconds, just your stats. So I'll put this right here and I'll put a label inside of it. On the label, I will say zero cookies. Next, I'll go into the VBox container, go into layout, set positions to anchors and go to top wide. Next, I'll go into the label, set the horizontal alignment to center, vertical alignment to center and Next, go here into Team Overrides and change the font size to 40 pixels. And there we go. We now have our cookie. So let's save the scene. So I'll make another folder here called Scenes where I'll be storing all my scenes. Next, I'll save this in the Scenes folder as game.scene and I'll run the game. If it says no main scene has ever been defined, you should press select current. And now your game will start up for the first time. And as you can see, I have my cookie in the center. When I click it, nothing happens yet. And this label does not update. So let's work on that. So next I'll create another folder 
to hold all our scripts. So I'll call this folder scripts. And I'll go to the game node, the root node of the scene, and press attach a new script. Put this in the scripts folder and just call it game for now. It doesn't really matter, but this will be the script where we hold our main logic. So we're going to need some variables. So first we'll need a cookies variable, which by default will be zero. And this variable will be incremented every time you press this cookie. So next we want to make it so then when you, when you press this cookie, it should add another cookie. So we'll also need amount per click, which will be one by default. Next, I'll go in, press the texture button. I'll rename it to click button. Go to node, button down, and then go into the game. And as you can see, on click button down. So remove the default script. And when you on click button down, we should just cookies plus equals, which means it adds to the current amount of cookies amount per click so now every time you press this button it will add one to the cookies amount so for now let's print it out how many cookies we have and when i click the cookie you can see uh bottom left you can see the amount of cookies we have next we should update this cookies amount but because I don't want to have everything in one single script, I will make a signal for updating the currency amounts. So up here, we'll define signal cookies changed. And when you change your cookies, we will emit the signal cookies changed. Now, when we go into our VBox container, I'll rename this to stats. Just attach a new script in the script folder. I'll call it stats for now. So when you press this click button, when you go, I mean, when you go to the root node, you can see this new custom signal. So we'll click it and connect it to our stats. Remove the default code and now when the cookie is changed, we should set this label, the cookie label, to the amount of cookies. So I'll rename this to the cookie label and just drag it in, hold control and let go. This will make a on ready variable for this label. So now I'll go cookie label dot text equals cookies and now we need to get the amount of cookies so I'll add arg argument here amount so here you add amount and this needs to be a string so str this will turn the number into a string string amount plus cookies which will make this into one string and it will say zero cookies one cookies etc in the game script we should update this arg this parameter in the in the emit signal to to the amount of cookies we have. You can do it by just comma and then cookies. So now when we try the game, we click the cookies. It updates when you click on the cookie. So this is nice and all, but when I restart the game, I still have zero cookies, and I want to keep my cookies. For every time I log back into the game, I want to save the amount of cookies I have. So I'll get started on the save file system. So the save path, which is where we will saving, where we will be saving our user data, will be user user data dot save next we create some functions 
to save and load the data. So I'll create a function for func save data. Now just make a var data equals brackets and we'll put clicks because that's all we have right now. Clicks, clicks, voila. Next, we'll put var file equals file access dot open save path file access dot write, which will write the save data to our save file, which is located here. Next, write file dot store var data which will store our data in the file. And then finally, file.close. So I made a mistake right here. I meant to type cookies instead of clicks. Next, I'll make a function for loading the data. func load data. So if file access dot file exists save path so if the save file exists then we will our file equals file access dot open save path file access dot read we'll read it if it exists only next we'll get the data by var data equals vial dot get var and we'll close the file once we have the data. Next we'll check if the data is type of data equals equals type dictionary. If the data is a dictionary then close this up then we'll load the data. So we'll set cookies Set it equal to data get cookies. And if they, if there isn't any data for cookies, we'll set it to zero. And if there isn't any load data, we'll write else. So if the, there doesn't exist any save file, then we should save the data. Next, every time we click this button and the currency updates, we want to save it. So we'll type save data. In later tutorials, I might change this to auto saving or saving when you close the game. But for now, for testing, this will work just fine. And we'll add a func ready variable. So when the game loads, we will load the data. To the ready variable, add the emit signal. So the label updates. So this label update so we can see our saved data. So as you can see, I have 11 cookies right here. And when I get some more cookies and start the game back up, it will be saved. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll cover the whole user interface so we can get a much prettier looking game than this. Thanks for watching and subscribe for the next part, which will probably come out tomorrow.